What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another rendering and blender tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create a lighting studio that you can use in order to more realistically light your objects inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so to start off, this is a model that I've downloaded from 3D Model Haven. So if you want to download this, you can go to 3D Model Haven and look up the, co uh, the coffee cart model. And uh, there's a blend file file in here that you can download that has all the textures already loaded into it. So you can also load the different maps down below. But uh, 3D Model Haven is a website where you can uh, download free models. They're, they're, it's a newer website, but they've got a bunch of great models and they're always adding to it. So if you want to check that out, I will link to that in the notes down below. And so in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can set up a studio for lighting different objects. Um, because right now, if we look at this object and we render it, there's nothing in here, right? There's no lighting or anything like that, so everything looks really dim. And so even if we were to come in here and just do a Shift A and then add like an area light or something like that and move it up and give it some more power, you can see how you could light part of this, but you're missing out on a lot of the things that make renderings look more realistic. So things like the uh, shadows down below, other things like that, we don't really have those in here right now. And so one of the ways to look at Blender and look at rendering is to think about um, your lighting as if you were a photographer. And so the first thing I did in order to do this is to look at some of the lighting studios that photographers use. So if you just type in photography lighting studio and then kind of scroll down, you can see how the way that photographers set up their lighting is they have light coming from multiple different points and then they've got kind of a background in the back. So instead of uh, your light kind of going off into space, you've got a background that light can bounce off of and you can also set up different lights in order to create different looks inside of Blender. And I think in a future video, we may look at like multiple different lighting setups. For this one, we're just gonna do kind of a simple like three point light. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our background. And so there's a few different ways you can create your background. Um, for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a Shift A and I'm just gonna add a cube. And so I'm gonna add a cube just like this, and we can go back into material preview mode for a second, but I'm going to take this and I'm gonna scale it up. So I'm just going to tap the S key, move my mouse out like this, and then just look at this in the front view, and I'm gonna move it up just like this. So the bottom of this is about on the red axis here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tab into edit mode, and I'm just gonna select the vertices on the front here, and I'm just going to tap the X key and I'm gonna delete the vertices. And so what that did is that deleted the vertices on the front side of this. And then if I want to, I can come back in here and I can scale this and then I can scale it along like the red axis or the X axis just by tapping the S key and then the X axis. And so what that's done is that's given us kind of a starting photography background. This may be a little big depending on what you're trying to do, but it ought to work just fine. So now if we were to set our camera up like this, we'd have a nice view of our object with a background right here. And so the first thing you wanna do when you do this, especially if you look at these photography lighting studios, is you're gonna notice that these actually curve up. So they very rarely come to a point or a line on the back here. So they're very rarely bent up at 90 degrees. There are a few of these in here that show something like that. But for the most part, these lighting studios have more of a soft curve right here. That way you don't necessarily see that sharp edge along the background. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go into our modifiers and we want to find the bevel modifier in the list. So we're just gonna click on this add modifier and we're gonna click on bevel in order to add the bevel modifier. And you can come in here and you can set the number of segments that are created to make this look a lot smoother. So you can make this curve kind of like this. You can also adjust the offset on that if you want to, to make it kind of a bigger curve. And so I'm gonna bring the number of segments up to maybe like 42 or something like that. But now you can see how if we look at this, we can't see that sharp line in here anymore. And so we'll go ahead and leave this as is for right now. So what we have is we have our background, we have our object, 
And uh, so what we're missing right now is we're missing our lighting. And so we need to add some lighting into our studio. And so there's a few different ways that you can look at this. So the first uh, first way is I'm gonna go ahead and put us into viewport shading mode, um, or I'm gonna put us into rendered mode in our viewport, and we're gonna start by adding a light. And so there's a couple different kinds of light you can add in here, depending on what you're trying to do. So you could add a point light, right? So if I was to add a point light, then I could just move it off to the side, move it up, maybe move it forward just a little bit and that's gonna shine light down on my object. I'm gonna go ahead and bump the power on this up to maybe like 100 watts for right now. And so you can definitely do that. Um, the thing with point lights though is because they're only a point in space, you're getting very pronounced shadows coming off of this. Um, so you can see how the shadows here are very pronounced. I'm gonna move my studio up just a little bit so that the wheel is actually touching the ground. And so a point light is gonna give you those more defined shadows in here. And you can adjust the way that those shadows look by adjusting our size up as well. So notice if I move this up to one, my shadows get a little bit, um, the edges on my shadows are less defined in here. So however, if we go back and we look at these photography lighting studios, a lot of these have these kind of like bigger light kind of diffusers that take the light from a single point and they make it bigger and wider, right? Because if they make it bigger and wider, then this is gonna be lit a lot better and you're not gonna have those super pronounced shadows. So we're okay with having some shadows using our studio, but we don't want nearly as many or nearly as much as what's being shown right now. And so what we can do is instead of using a point light, a lot of the time people use area lights instead. So we're just gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add an area light instead of a point light. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move that up like this and we're gonna move it off to the side and we're gonna point it at our object. And so one thing about the way that lighting gets set up in Blender or really any photography setting is you kind of set up your lights um, so that they complement each other from an overall lighting standpoint, but also from a shadow standpoint. So let's say for right now, we were to take this object, let's go ahead and let's bump it up to 100 watts for right now. So it's going ahead and it's shining the light in here. Well, what's happening is this light is shining across here and it's casting a shadow across the side, which if that's the look you're going for, that's great. You can definitely do that. But a lot of, a lot of lighting setups, what they do is they have one light pointing this way, and then they have a second light that points the other way. So I'm gonna start by moving this forward just a little bit and then making sure that it's still pointed at my object, which is really easy to do just by clicking and dragging this little yellow point. But then I'm gonna do a Shift D, and I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm gonna move it across like this. So you can see how I've created this second light, and I'm gonna point that on this side right here. So now, if we go back into our render preview mode, you can see how what this is doing is now we have lights pointing this direction across our object and this direction across our object. So we're getting a lot better lighting in here now because we've done that. So we've got our two lights right here. And then a lot of the time what people do is they'll put a third light on the backside that's kind of a fill light. And so what a fill light can do is a fill light can be used in order to reduce shadows even more. So we can take this light and let's go ahead and let's duplicate it across here. And we may move this one down and have it point across our object like this. And so you can use the power and direction and location of this fill light in order to adjust the strength of the shadows in here. So if you wanted less shadows showing up from these other two lights, you could up the strength of your fill light. If you just wanted a little bit of a highlight, you could turn this back down. So you can adjust the strength and position of this light in order to adjust the result that you're going to get. And so there's definitely a lot more we could do with lighting studios. I want to I want to get more in depth on this in a future video, but this should give you a good place to kind of get started for your lighting. So from here, we could just add a camera in. So just do Shift A camera. Go ahead and tap the N key and go to our view and lock our camera to our view and then tap zero. Then we can just kind of move our camera until we get a better view of this object. And we may want to go ahead and 
go into our dimensions and just set this to be maybe more like 1080 by 1080. Um, so set this aspect ratio to be a little bit different. Just so that fits a little bit better in our view. And then we can go ahead and we can go up to our render and we can render our image. And so then from here, one other thing you might want to think about doing, this is something that Andrew Price, a uh, Blender guru, always recommends, is if you want to go over into your um, into your render properties, you can set your look to a higher contrast. And so the higher contrast is gonna make it so that your textures don't look any kind of washed out. Um, so for whatever reason, um, when you set this to none, this looks a little bit washed out and the highlights between the lights and the darks in here kind of like blend together. But if you set this to high contrast, then you're gonna get a better, more contrasted image. So from here, once we have this set up, and I'm gonna go ahead and inside of my view layer properties, I'm gonna go ahead and turn denoising on. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to render this. So I'm just gonna go up to render and click on render image. And so I've turned denoising on and what this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna create a rendering based on the settings that we have associated with this. So you can see how this is going through. It takes a little bit longer with the denoising on, um, but for something like this, which is a singular image that I don't think is gonna take super long, um, I like to turn that on, but you can see how we're getting a great result from this lighting studio just from those couple lights that we added in here. So that's where I'm going to end this video. In a future video, we may talk about different lighting setups and how you can use them to generate different results. But I just wanted to teach you to create something quick that's going to allow you to get decent lighting for your render so you don't have to spend a ton of time setting something up. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video video. Thanks guys.